How you guys doing? James here. This is a topic um, I've been wanting to say. I'm going to let you listen to some videos. And here's my comment. Is that you decide when you, when you pick up your Bible, you read, and there's a scripture that says about the chosen people. I want you to read closely and think closely. Does these people fit the image of what we have learned in our Bible? If you were the Gentiles, Christianity? over 450 have been have already been killed in Hamas attack and Israeli retaliation. Common people caught in the crossfire are suffering the worst here. it is prophesied in the Holy Scripture that when the true descendants are in the land, that the land will be at peace and the entire world will be at peace. Truly ask yourself, has there ever been peace in the land since 1948 or has there been constant war? The biggest in recent years. Thousands of rockets have been launched into Israel from Gaza and dozens of militants appear to have entered southern Israel. Here's what we know so far. The rocket attacks have struck Tel Aviv and areas that surround Gaza. Air raid sirens have also sounded in several other towns. At least one person is reported to have been killed so far. The town of Ashkelon has seen major explosions. Details of Palestinian incursions are unclear, but gunmen have been reported in towns near the Gaza border and Israel have been, sorry, Israel have, Israelis have been warned to stay inside. Hamas military commander Mohammed Dayyif announced the start of the operation in a broadcast on Hamas media, calling on Palestinians everywhere to fight. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is holding an emergency meeting and the military says it's striking targets in Gaza in response. But in a world filled with change, a powerful awakening is taking place. The Hebrew awakening movement is sweeping across the globe. The true descendants of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob are discovering their true identity. They're rising in entrepreneurship, amassing wealth, acquiring land to build set-apart communities, embracing a royal and holy character, returning to their heritage, keeping the commandments of the Most High, and surely and steadily rising back to their position of greatness. I am a Gentile, and I firmly believe in supporting God's true people. The scripture says that whoever blesses the seed of Abraham will be blessed, and whoever curses them shall be cursed. As Gentiles, Many of us have been wrongly supporting the wrong group of people. repent before God and before Christ and turn our support to the true children of Israel. As the days, months, and years go by, you will see even more the truth of my words. It is time to cling to Christ and to cling to his true people. The Western world is going to continue to fall, degradation, moral decline, wars and rumors of wars, until finally Babylon collapses. World power is going to shift to the east, and the time will come when the true remnant of Jacob will return to the land. As a Gentile, my mindset is that I will humble myself and serve the true people because salvation is only in Christ and the kingdom will be ruled by his people. Keep seeking. At Photo Bucket, we know how you feel. You think all your photos and videos on social media are safe until they're gone. 600,000 accounts are hacked every single day. So don't put all your memories in one basket. Back up your photos and videos from social media to PhotoBucket, where we make it easy to edit, share, and save your memories. 
Sign up today and get one whole terabyte of personal storage for only $5 a month. Wait a second, you don't go anywhere. I'm gonna tell you something that's gonna blow your mind. <laughs> what if I were to tell you that this whole time you've been supporting the Israelites and Israel because of your Christianity? You've actually been supporting the wrong group. Because the true Israelites are black. Because the true Israelites are black. Have you ever wondered what color Jesus was when he walked this earth, if that was even his name? For a long time, that's what I called him, and when I prayed, I pictured a six foot tall white pacey dude. In the last few years, I've had multiple visitations from Yeshua, which is what I've been, called, I've been guided to call him now, and my opinion of what he looked like when he walked this earth has drastically changed. Now some people might say it doesn't matter if he was black or white. Now some people might say it doesn't matter if he was black or white. Now some people might say it doesn't matter if he was black or white. It does not matter what color Jesus was. What matters is that he came to the earth, lived a perfect life, died a death for the sins of the world, and then conquered the grave, proving that he is the Son of God. That's all that matters. Now some people might say it doesn't matter if he was black or white, but in my opinion, I feel it does. If I've been praying to a six foot tall white dude, when in actuality I should have been picturing a five foot tall dark skinned Jewish being, to me that's important. What's your thoughts? Please be respectful with your comments. Israel is one of the most racist countries in the world. While you'll never hear anyone in the mainstream media say this, this is actually one of the most important things you need to understand if you want to know what's happening right now. This guy's chosen people? From its inception, the whole idea of Israel as a country was based on racism. Israel was conceived as a Jewish state, and while there's nothing wrong in principle with Jews having a homeland, the problem is that they insisted that that homeland had to be in Palestine, which already belonged to someone, the Palestinians. The slogan of Israel's founders was, a land for a people for a people without a land. But deep down, they all knew that the only way to have a Jewish majority in Palestine, an Arab country, was to expel the Arabs. One of the founders of Israel, Yosef Weitz, wrote, There's no room in the country for both peoples. There's no way but to transfer the Arabs from here to neighboring countries. Israel was quite literally founded by expelling and massacring hundreds of thousands of Arabs in a years-long process called the Nakba. And when you found a country based on racial exclusion, you're gonna get a culture that fosters and celebrates racial exclusion. Because countries that commit terrible atrocities rarely acknowledge committing those atrocities. And the presence of Palestinians who remained in Palestine became a constant reminder, not only of the violence that founded Israel, but of the constantly looming threat that they might come back and try to reclaim their land. Every day you can find videos coming out of Israel showing Israelis calling for all Arabs to die. Is that chosen people? Insulting the Prophet Muhammad. Desecrating mosques. Spitting on Christians, mocking and celebrating the murder of Palestinians, committing violent hate crimes against Palestinians, watching Gaza get carpet bombed from a cliffside for entertainment. But don't just go off these anecdotes. Let's look at some of the polls. One poll found that two thirds of Israeli teens believe Arabs to be less intelligent, uncultured, and violent. It also found that 50% of Israelis wouldn't live in the same building as Arabs, wouldn't befriend Arabs, wouldn't let their children befriend Arabs, and wouldn't let Arabs into their homes. Another poll found that 60% of Israeli Jews want segregation from Arabs. Another poll found that half of Israeli Jews agree with the statement, most Jews are better than most non-Jews because they were born Jews. The poll also found that 88% of Israeli Jews would be disturbed if their son befriended an Arab girl, and 90% would be disturbed if their daughter befriended an Arab boy. This poll found that about half of Israeli high schoolers don't think Arabs should have the right to vote. 
Another poll showed that almost half of Israeli Jews don't want Arabs teaching their kids. Not only are these views widely held in Israeli society, they're also represented in government, which codifies these sentiments into law. For example, Israel has a law that says if an Israeli marries a Palestinian, or someone from several other regional Arab states, that person isn't allowed to move in with said Israeli. This law was passed in 2003, but it's been renewed every single year since. Israel also doesn't allow interreligious marriage to be performed in the country, which is meant to deter Jews from marrying non-Jews. In 2018, Israel passed the nation-state law, a law which has constitutional status, which... That means Christians or Muslims. Is the right to exercise national self-determination, i.e. have rights, is the exclusive right of Jews no one else. There's also the Nakba law, which makes it illegal to acknowledge the Nakba, the expulsions of Palestinians that were needed to found Israel. This would be like passing a law to make it illegal to talk about indigenous genocide or slavery in America. There's also the admissions committee law, which basically allows towns to operate panels that deny applications for entry based on socio-cultural compatibility, which essentially just legalizes racist housing discrimination. In Israel, advocating genocide of Palestinians doesn't hurt your chances of holding a high position in government. And in fact, in many cases, it helps. In 2014, Israeli lawmaker Ayelet Shaked wrote an unhinged rant on Facebook, calling all Palestinians enemy combatants and saying their mothers should be killed for giving birth to, quote, little snakes. The next year, she was appointed a Minister of Justice by Benjamin Netanyahu. It's a Ben Gavir, a lifelong admirer of Mir Kahan, an Arab exterminationist, a man who praised a Jewish settler who killed the Palestinian for throwing a rock at him, a man who was famously acquitted after being criminally charged for chanting death to Arabs, is Israel's current Minister of National Security. He's not some fringe figure either. He's one of the most popular politicians in Israel right now. In the last few days, Israel's been working hard to cast itself as the victim the victim of hatred, the victim of terrorism, the victim of anti-Semitism, that they have no choice but to lay siege to Gaza. But underneath this carefully concocted victim complex is a racist, Jewish supremacist state that's been trying to finish the job that the Nakba started for decades. And really, this shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone. After all, they're literally cutting off water and electricity to a city of 2 million people right now. Their generals talk openly about flattening Gaza and killing the animals, meaning Palestinians. It's obvious their goal is genocide. Family. The Jersey Mike's catering box is the easiest way to feed your friends. The hard part is picking your sub. That's I'm getting, I need to see the other side to this. I'm getting the whole truth. What they're not going to tell me. Oh, 
בית כנסת זה אשי ולא
All we got to do is get the people, and we will have everything that they own. I don't want nothing that they own. But in order to do the work I got to do, I can't worry about how I'm going to pay an electric bill or rent. I can't worry about that. And I'm telling you, God is taking it off for me. Because he knows what I'm ready to do now. That's everything and anything at the same time. Tifa, senior spokesperson for the Middle East at the World Food Program, joins us now from Cairo. Thank you very much for being on Al Jazeera. I know you must be extremely busy at this point in time. First of all, can you just bring us up to date with what the situation is right now in terms of food inside Gaza? Well, the situation is quite severe. The conflict has severely disrupted the food production and the distribution network in Gaza and in the West Bank. With the borders closed, Gaza is on the brink of running out of water and electricity. Half of the shops that, are, that we are monitoring uh, inside Gaza have reported that they might run out of food in two days. Others have stopped for less than a week. Out of five mills um, inside uh, Gaza, only one is still operational, which means that the production of bread is being impacted. So in the, also in the West Bank, shops are running out of supplies. The electricity cost is bringing the threat of spoiling food. The only power plant in Gaza is running out of fuel. So we do have a lot of risks, especially that we are unable, even on the humanitarian side, to replenish our food stock. Our warehouses are really running low because we're distributing food on daily basis. Today we have reached up to now 380,000 people, whether it is um, with uh, ready to eat food in the UN run shelter or by the distribution of vouchers uh, for some of the families outside so they can go to the stores and have whatever is left of the stuff in the site in these stores. You said that some places are going to run out of food within two days. What happens after that point in time, apart from people not being able to eat? What, what, what actually happens in the days after that? It will be very difficult. These days will be bleak. People will go hungry. And this is why the World Food Program is calling for humanitarian access to Gaza to allow the delivery of essential food commodities, fuel, and other humanitarian supplies. We need safe and unobstructed passage to all the humanitarian workers and the protection of the premises we work, and also, most importantly, to be able to get food inside Gaza. Gaza. The pre-positioned food stock that WFP uh, has is running out. We only had food enough for 44,000 pe uh, people that beginning, that at the beginning uh, of the crisis just like four or five days ago and we will run out. So we, ha we have procured food regionally, we have food that's ready to be deployed, we just need the safe access and the safe passage. Mm. Who are you appealing to? Are you talking to anyone directly? Are you talking to Israel? Are you talking to Egypt? The United Nations, the the United States. Who who are you speaking to directly about trying to get a humanitarian corridor open so you can Where get supplies back into in, Gaza? Is in Tel Aviv. I think collectively, as the United Nations, we're all calling and appealing, and the I know the Secretary General is doing a lot of efforts uh, to uh, you know help open a passage for the humanitarian supplies inside Gaza. But also from the World Food Program, uh, we are in touch with all the parties to allow us to get to this point. I think there are also the issue of, you know, shelling and safe passage and ensuring that these trucks have the guarantees that would uh, make them able to go inside Gaza, but also most importantly, to be able to move inside Gaza to get food from these borders to the areas where we need to distribute them, which is basically mostly the shelters. Yeah. Of course. Just finally, is this your worst case scenario? What is playing out right now? Of course, I think it's it's, uh, it's a very bad situation. It's difficult. The humanitarian suffering is beyond uh, imagination, and um, you know we're running out God's of time. We're running people. out of supplies, and our hands are tied. Okay, thank you so much. We really do appreciate your time. Uh, that is Abia Atifa, the senior spokesperson for the Middle East at the World Food Program. Thank you so much.
I ain't saying nothing. You see it for yourself. I'm going show. Each stitch a connection between elegant materials, between artisans. Okay, so we made it into another week, and it was an eventful one. There are many things occurring right now in front of our faces. The next morning after this video is released will be September 23rd, which is the day where many in the mainstream church are declaring that the pre-tribulation rapture is going to occur. We will see how they all feel on Sunday when they're still here. I'm not trying to be trivial about this whole thing because this is a very serious and big topic. What is to come of us who believe? That is the question that everyone desires to know and have a clear understanding of. And there is no doubt a lot of debate surrounding it. Over the past couple of months, I have tried to interject and clear up some things in regards to the promises our Father has given us and the doctrine of the pre-tribulation rapture. And praise Yah, there have been many that have come to understand that this doctrine is created by men. But there still is some confusion. In my video a couple of weeks ago, I thought I cleared much of this up by going over the point about who is taken from the earth and who is not. That our promise is to inherit the earth. But there were still some points not really understood. Many people still needed to understand how 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, with being caught up in the clouds, fit in. And even though I went over this in the second part of the pre-tribulation rapture series, apparently the understanding wasn't properly given, and so it is important that clarity is given. So I do not leave room for confusion. So this is what I'm going to do. Every time I ask someone to prove the pre-tribulation rapture, they show 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 17 and 18. These are the verses people hold on to. So being that, we're at a point in time where there is a large majority of people expecting this pre-tribulation rapture to happen. And I promise you, with 1,000% surety, it will not. It is a doctrine of men. I want to close this end time discussion with a clear explanation of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, when we are caught up in the air to meet the sign. If this is the scripture that people are so confused by, this is the subject that we must thoroughly go over. We must do this because we're not called to leave this earth. We are called to inherit it. And if you are a believer, it is very important that you truly know the promises you believe in Messiah for. We should not be having all these separate ideas about the promises Yah has for us. That's religion. Religious ideals keep people in a mindset of going to heaven. But that is not what Messiah has said. He said he goes to prepare a place for us. And we see in the last two chapters of the Bible that this place comes down after Judgment Day and it is our blessing. But there is so much that happens before that time, so I think it's important that we all have clarity and understanding. I want to make sure that there has been a clear teaching on this so that in the end, people have heard the truth and it has been made clear. You can choose to agree or not, but being that I started this discussion, I want to make sure I close it with clarity. We are going to discuss what it means when we're gathered in the air to meet Messiah. Let's begin. Okay, so the first thing I want everyone to come to terms with is what your faith in Messiah is about. We understand the message of John 3.16. For Elohim so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And so yes, we believe in him. And because we do, we know we shall not perish, but we will have everlasting life. But the everlasting life part is what we need a little bit more clarity on. I find that all the confusion about what happens at the end and the thoughts about the rapture all come because people are not reading their complete Bible. It is important that you read the whole Bible and really understand what is being said in it before you truly claim you understand what is to come. For instance, there is a strong majority that have beliefs in the pre-tribulation rapture, primarily because they have only studied the New Testament and they have based their beliefs fully upon that level of study. So understand this. Whether you agree or disagree with what I'm about to say about the pre-tribulation rapture, it is important that you are at least honest with yourself and admit that you have not fully read the Old Testament and the, all the books of the prophets. All the major and minor prophets that fill up your Bible, most believers have failed to read. And therefore, this is often a primary reason why there is so much disagreement within the body. Now, the biggest point of scripture, like I said, that people seem to need understanding of is what the Apostle Paul was referring to in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 
it says, But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Yahusha died and rose again, even so Elohim will bring with him those who sleep in Yahusha. For this we say to you by the word of the Adun, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Adun will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Adun himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of Elohim, and the dead in Messiah will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Adun in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Adun. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. I want, I want to read this to you right quick. Um, the estimate 2,200 rockets were fired towards southern and central Israel, including Tel Aviv and Jerusalem by Hamas militants in court to Israel defense for early. Remember what I was showing you what's in Tel Aviv? Hamas fired. Not saying that Hamas, but it's not by chance or coincidence that this happened in Tel one then them two cities in southern Israel had this happen. Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 13 to 18. So again, this is what we need to unpack here and deal with. I'm going to cover this section of scripture once and for all because this seems to be the main verses used that people need understanding of. This portion of scripture that I just read is dealing with Messiah's second coming. We know this based on verses 15 and 16. It says, For this we say to you by the word of the Adun, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Adun will by no means perceive those who are asleep. For the Adun himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of Elohim, and the dead in Messiah will rise first. Now please don't get confused when I use the word Adun. I do not like the English word Lord. Adun means master. I do not like that pagan word Lord. If you're new to this channel, please don't get distracted by that. I'm just clearing that up for you. But, okay, based on what we just read, Messiah is coming back. He is descending from heaven. This is about his second coming. So let's be clear here. Let's cover what he said about this when he was here the first time. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in Elohim. Believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, in the way you know. That's John chapter 14, verses 1 through 4. He also says, A little while, and you will not see me. And again, a little while, and you will see me, because I go to the Father. Then some of his disciples said amongst themselves, What is this that he says to us, a little while, and you will not see me. And again, a little while, and you will see me, because I go to the Father. They said, therefore, what is this that he says, a little while? We do not know what he is saying. Now Yahusha knew that they desired to ask him, and he said to them, Are you inquiring among yourselves about what I said? A little while, and you will not see me. And again, a little while, and you will see me. Most assuredly, I say to you that you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice, and you will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will be turned into joy. That's John chapter 16, verses 16 through 20. He also said, I came forth from the Father and have come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. John chapter 16, verse 28. And there's many more occurrences of this. Messiah said, I'm going to show you something right quick. Watch this. How, how, how is this all connected, James? How is this all connected? Let Leo tell you. We don't even own the image of black people. We don't even own the image of the black people. Watch this. The Bible is about you. 
So late in 2016 um, is when I hear that the black people brought here on the slave ships could possibly be the same people that the whole Old Testament is written about, the Israelites. We've now heard Kanye West say it. We've now heard Kyrie Irving say it. We once heard Floyd Mayweather, I showed you in the Drink Champs interview where he said it. You are hearing all these different scholars come out and teachers and professors and even scientists come out sane and religiously sane. We believe that many of the true biblical descendants of Abraham or the people currently referred to as black, African-American, Negro, Sephardic, or etc. Evidence from scripture cited in next point of belief below, which I'll get you this moment, that have been scattered throughout the nations of the world. The current Ashokanazi Jews are imposters. The Bible is about us. What is it going to take for you to believe this? That the God that they worship in the Christian churches, the God that they worship in the Muslim and the Arab the God that they worship in Judaism and in the synagogues, the God that the Catholics worship and the God that the Pope prays to every single night, this God is your God. Jubilee 1 and 24. And they all shall be called children of the living God. And every angel and every spirit shall know, yeah, they shall know that these are my children and that I am their father in uprightness and righteousness and that I love them. This God that the whole world accredits for the creation of the world, this God that the whole world accredits for the creation of the human race, this God that part of the Red Sea, this God that we all worship to and love, this God loves you. He said he loves you. He said he loves you. He said that the whole world is going to know that you are his people. He said that even the angels are going to know. That every spirit is going to know. Why? If there's another people right now claiming to be God's people, why does, it, does the world need to know one day? Why does somebody need to reveal you to the world one day if they already are who they say they are? 92% of the people that say that they are Jews today are in fact Ashkenazi, sons of Goma, so thereby are the synagogue of Satan they who say they are Jews and are not. So who are the real Jews? The Bible is about Jew. I don't care what your pastor says. I don't care what you heard about the scriptures. These are the last days and these are the end times. And I'm telling y'all with 100% assurity that the Bible is about you. Uh, Genesis 15, 13. I got to hear this up. And he said to Abraham, know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs. And they shall serve them and afflict them 400 years. This is Genesis 15 and 13. Listen to this. It's also repeated in the, Jubil the book, book of Jubilees, which y'all know I like to read a lot. That's one of the lost books of the Bible. It's in Jasher as well. And it's also in Acts, the book of Acts 7 and 6. And God spake unto the wise that his seed shall sojourn in a strange land. And they shall bring them into bondage and entreat them evil, mistreat them evil. Listen to this for 400 years. And the nation to whom they shall be in bondage to will I judge. God said there will be 400 years of mistreatment. Captivity. And then 400 years, these people would be mistreated. And then he said, after that 400 years, the nation to whom they, that mistreated them, will I judge? Oh, I hope y'all getting this, and I hope y'all stand with me on this. Now, judgment is seven years. Second Edra 7, 43. The judgment will last seven years. That's the arrangement I have made for judgment day, but I have revealed these things only to you. These are the real Jews. So please tell me, what part of Africa is this guy from? So there's no need for guessing. The scripture <laughs> says that in Genesis 15, 13, and it says in Acts 7 and 6, that a people was going to be mistreated for 400 years. And after that 400 years, those people who have been mistreated, the nations that mistreated them, will I judge. And now we just read in 2nd Edges that judgment is seven years.
It's seven years. So 1619 is when they say we got here. To 2020 or to 2021, however you want to calculate. But I have yet to meet one person, not one person yet, who has not said to me, that they do not believe since 2020, 2021, that America is under judgment. So that is precisely 400 years. I'm trying to show you that the Bible is about you. It's about you. The black people, the people of color that are here, that have been brought here from Africa, their ancestors brought here from Africa, are the Hebrew Israelites. It's about us. The scriptures being revealed right now, right before our very eyes. The great awakening that you see happening in Kyrie Irving and Jalen Brown and so many other celebrities. The, 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 the great uh, falling away where you see our brothers and sisters cooning for the other side and Shannon Sharp and uh, Stephen A. Smith and you see them going and cooning for the other side. The great falling away. Everybody is starting to choose their sides. Either you with God, either you with the truth, or you with Satan. I want y'all to hear what I'm saying. The Bible said that the truth will set you free for a reason. The Bible said that in the last days that brother will be against brother and father against daughter and cousin against a cousin. The people in your own house will be separated or be your enemies. What it is saying is that there was going to be a falling away in the end. There was going to be a split. We were going to be split on the truth. Because we've been lied to about what the truth was our whole lives. And now that we're finding out the truth, we're split on the truth. The Bible is about you. i got to hurry this up. God is coming to save you. <laughs> this is so good. God is not coming to save the world. But God is coming to save you. The world hasn't been in generational poverty for 400 years. The world hasn't been experiencing systematic racism for 400 years. The world hasn't been experiencing systematic oppression in the judicial system for 400 years. The world hasn't been uh, experiencing systematic discrimination in banking and in housing and home loans and, and land and, and the wealth gap and in school and in education and in dilapidated housing. The world hasn't been experiencing the same oppression that you've been experiencing for 400 years. God is not coming to save the world. God is coming to save you. I hope y'all hear what I'm saying. Now somebody says it's all about Jesus. You know what? You can say that because you never lived in an inner city. You can say that because you never lived in a ghetto. You never lived in, you know, in the hood. You never lived in whatever, whatever the, the struggles they are. You got to get with the struggle. You got to get in the struggle. To, come on, everybody. Amen. We don't even own our images. The black man and the black woman does not even own the image of the black man and the black woman. They got the movie that just came out, Wakanda Forever and the Woman King, where the woman is portrayed as strong and, and, and hard and, and, and above her man and hateful and angry and pissed. She's not, she's not portrayed as God told her to be portrayed in the Bible, as sweet and gentle and beautiful and delicate. She's not even in control of the image of herself. The white Jewish own all the distribution companies and the production companies of the movies that are produced by black people. Even the even the information put in our music, the right. toxicity put in our music, it's nothing promoting the idea of a Is king this, taking care of a queen the and then taking care of the future kings and the future queens. It's just us talking about killing each other and Jewish people getting paid off of it. Surprising report from Israel today where officials are taking seriously a recent upsurge in spitting and hitting attacks on clergy and the vandalism of Christian sites. And the vandalism of Christian sites. And the vandalism of Christian sites. Hey, Christian, check this out. A surprising report from Israel today where officials are taking seriously a recent upsurge in spitting and hitting attacks on clergy and the vandalism of Christian sites. Christians in Jerusalem's old city say they've been repeatedly assaulted, repeatedly assaulted, repeatedly assaulted. 
Shut up. We don't do anything illegal. You cannot take us to jail. If you are not involved, please go. Shalom, my friend. We bless you. You're my country. You come to the United States, you can say whatever you want to say. That is a free world, yes? You're not in the United States. You're in Israel. I understand. You cannot say whatever you want to say here. Yes, you can. It's legal. It is legal to preach about Yeshua. We preach at Damascus Gate. The police said it's okay. We preach at Jaffa Gate. The police said it's okay. Please stop. I respect you. The godly thing is to kill me. The godly thing is to kill me. The godly thing is to kill me. That is the right thing. Are you Jewish? Do you want to honor God? That is the godly thing to do. We respect one another. The godly thing is to kill me. That's right. That's what the Torah says. The Torah says to kill us. The Torah says that I know uh, people who worship idols such as yourself when there is a Sanhedrin to kill us. Yes. Okay. That's what the Torah says. So we know how the Jewish people feel about Christians, yes? That you discriminate are, against Christians. Christians are idol worshippers. Death kills the people, huh? include the desecration of a Protestant cemetery on Mount Zion, an attack on international Christians during a day of prayer for Jerusalem, and harassment at a Messianic concert in Jerusalem. Can I tell you about this? You guys want to go to Israel now? What is the biblical reason that we need to support Israel? The biblical reason we need to support Israel is first our own benefit. Genesis 12, I will bless those who bless you. I can tell you that the day that my church made a conscious decision to bless the Jewish people and the state of Israel with unconditional love, God began to pour out blessings on us individually and our church that could not be explained any other way. I'm delighted to present my latest book, In Defense of Israel. This book will expose the sins of the fathers and the vicious abuse of the Jewish people. In defense of Israel will shape Christian theology. It scripturally proves that the Jewish people as a whole did not reject Jesus as Messiah. It will also prove that Jesus did not come to earth to be the Messiah. Jesus did not come to earth to be the Messiah. Jesus did not come to earth to be the Messiah. It will prove that there was a Calvary conspiracy between Rome, the high priest and Herod to execute Jesus as an insurrectionist too dangerous to live. Since Jesus refused by word and deed to claim to be the Messiah, how can the Jews be blamed for rejecting what was never offered? Read it in this shocking expose in defense of Israel. I don't believe that the Jewish state and modern Zionism would have been possible without Christian Zionism. Christian Zionism. Christian Zionism. The Jewish state and modern Zionism would have been possible without Christian Zionism. I think that uh, the many Christian supporters of the rebirth of the Jewish state and the ingathering of the Jewish people in the 19th century made possible the rise of Jewish Zionism. Let's 
spitting on Kristen. What's your thoughts? Please be respectful with your comments. Also, please click the like. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. And you know, a lot of people or Christians support Israel. That part of Israel. But they don't, even, they don't even know the whole story. They don't even know the whole story about it. But in order to have a strong relationship, we need to be. And as noted, would say to us, sing us one of those songs of Zion. Hold on. Songs we sing, praise and worship, we pray, all of this. And as far as the image, no one made a big to do about it because everything in the world is white, right? Where did we come from? Where did so-called black people come from? We just kind of fell out of the sky, I guess, or just came up out of the dirt, as some would call it. They call us um, dirt monkeys and um, porch monkeys and all kinds of things, right? So all of a sudden, now that the truth is coming out and the actual identity of the Messiah and the children of Israel is coming to the forefront. Everyone wants to say that color, race, identity, names, none of it matters all of a sudden. And so since none of it matters, why the big fuss over us making the correction? Why is everyone so frustrated when we say, well, you know, actually his ivory or Hebrew name, uh, because they call it the Hebrew language, is actually ivory. Um, if none of it matters, why are you concerned as to whether or not we are using the Hebrew name or the uh, name that was given to him, the Latin name, which actually means, for Jesus, it means earth pig. What is the big concern if the name doesn't matter? Why is everyone so upset about the correction? If the image or the color or racial identity of the Messiah didn't matter, why are you upset with the correction? If you want to believe that he is the white image that has been passed around the world for centuries, have at it. But what we are doing, we are making the correction because there is more to it than just what his name is and what his identity was. You see, there are specific prophecies that are related to the children of Israel only. End time prophecies. And... Those prophecies highlight many things, many future events that deal with the Israelites. And if no one really truly knows who they are, then how can the prophecies be attached to the right people if no one knows who they truly are? But see, here's the issue now. The scripture prophesied, the word of the Most High prophesied that in the last days, that the real children of Israel will come to themselves and begin to praise the Most High in the land of their captivity in the last days. This is prophesied to happen. Now, that is not the only thing that is an identity marker for the Israelites. The scripture also talked about how the curses would be upon the real children of Israel as a sign of who they are. And that they would be hated of all nations. When you look around the world, so-called black people are hated of all nations. Hated, despised, discriminated against. And we can list probably more than a hundred additional curses. Things that were said to be placed upon the children of Israel to identify who they are in the last days. There is just so much that can be shown or talked about or proven in scripture as to who they are. But one of those things that has been a roadblock for so long is looking at the image of a white Jesus. A white Jesus, which is actually a so-called Negro Yahusha. When you change the name and the image and you assign a whole new image, look, identity, racial identity, name, all of that. And you even switch up the region 
and say, oh no, it was the Middle East, when actually the Middle East was actually Northern Africa for the longest until deceivers and reprobates changed it, okay? But now that the truth is coming out and we are actually setting the record straight, history is actually showing up and say, no, this is what true history is. It's almost as if the truth is springing forth and no one can stop it. And so the frustration of that is actually taking hold of a lot of people, people of all racial backgrounds, white people, black people, Asian people. A lot of people are getting frustrated because this truth is coming out. A lot of people are getting excited because this truth is coming out. We are excited. Other racial groups, I, we even know Gentiles that follow our ministry, they are equally as excited. We've had Gentiles come to our um, Kodesh events. They have been just as excited about the truth as well. You see, we've had Asians, people from around the world have been in contact with this ministry and are excited about this truth of all racial backgrounds. But on the flip side of that, we've had people all around the world, people from all around the world, in touch with this ministry who do not agree with what we teach. They believe that we are causing racial division, religious division. They believe that we are dividing the body of Christ by bringing racial identity into this. They are missing the bigger picture, which I talked about, prophecy that is attached to the Israelites in the last days. And if you are under the deception that the Israelites are those that dwell in the land of Israel today, then you will not know and understand what is about to take place as it relates to the true Israelites. And so yes, the racial identity does matter. Just because it makes you uncomfortable to look at us in our present state, you see that we are down, but if you were really in scripture, you would know that the scripture told you that would be one of the markers, that we will be a base people, that we will be brought low to the ground. Part of our punishment was that the other nations would rule over us, and that we would be hated, that there would be no regard for the old or the young, that our young men would be on the street corners like wild bulls, that our children would be fatherless, that our women would be bald, that our men would be dying by the edge of the sword in the streets. So many more things that there would be an evil eye one against another. The husband, evil eye against the wife. The wife, evil eye against the husband. Brothers and sisters hating each other, evil eye against one another. Need I continue on with the curses and the evidence of the curses that we would be wearing on us like a garment as the scripture has prophesied? And, so many and more so things. the people of Israel, that's not happening. It said that we would be in the land of our ca captivity and that our captors would say to us, sing us one of those songs of Zion. You know you should be planning for the future. And it's, it, and so the current people in Israel don't fit the curses, ladies and gentlemen. They, they, they're not downtrodden. They're not, you know, they're not held in captive. They were brought, brought on cargo slaves and the transatlantic slave. So they don't fit the scriptures. It was the combination in the river, in the book that, that the nations collaborated to bring and to erase these people's history so they will be forbidden no more. Then the scriptures, in the one part of the scripture comes out, there's going to come a time where the Most High is going to reveal. That's why you, you, you see over there the, the, the black males tell the truth. And they don't, so the Zionists don't want that to be released. That's the truth. It all comes down to this. Not the book. They want, they want it, and what it is right now, they're trying to rewrite the history for the next hundred years. That's what they're trying to do. To make it look like these people are the people, not the ones they have called monkeys and, and all kind of things. All these nations are judged people based on skin color, especially particularly Afro-descent looking people. But, it, but, it, but if you think about it, they don't, most churches won't even tell you about the book of Revelation. 
They won't tell you that the that, that the one is there's a being in heaven have feet dark as brass, burnt brass. They don't tell you that. Sardis. They don't tell you that. It's right there in the King James Bible and L L I T. Nobody won't touch that. Nope, nobody. And, and no matter the black, white, Spanish, or whatever church it is, they don't want to touch it. They don't want to know who the true God is. Because subconsciously on this planet, there are some people who say that they, the subconscious that they're racist. Because they see skin color. And if skin color wasn't matter, they wouldn't hit it. And skin color matter, they wouldn't change the images when Hollywood portrayed them. From Moses to Jeremiah to Jesus to Paul to Job, Jacob. Why is that? They, why is that? Because some of the other nations know this. Judaism know this, Muslims know this, and there are some Christians that know this. But somehow, some of these nations who had the people of African descent were among them, but put them on the lower class. So they all guilty of it. They all guilty of it. And other ones too. We go to their land, and we would hate all nations. Don't matter if you go to Southeast Asia, you're hated. You at least you go to Latin America, you're hated. You you mock, you mock, you make fun of, and say you're next to an animal. Whatever language, even in the middle, certain parts of the Middle East, you, the darker you are, the servant you get. You go to parts of North Africa, Morocco, and Libya, where some place was struck by. They had slaves there, the Saharan people of the desert, African-looking people. But, but people say color doesn't matter. Kind of funny, ain't it? These people just shows you. And you got other people who are fair-complected white people giving you the scriptures. So you can't use that one. They found truth. These individuals found the truth. Now they probably they probably label them there's something wrong with them because that's how deep it is. The evil people that will look like them once you get the truth, they're still fighting. They're still fighting, and they will take that racism to hell with it. They will stand before the Almighty God and His angel with, with it. That's how it is. That's how deep it is, is it really. We try to tell you. And you see, in, in a land, for the, to, the, to, my, to my Christian brother and sister, the chosen people, you see how they felt about Christians. Not just Muslims. Not just he, even Hebrews. And other people. The white man, Israel. That's what they wanted to do. To control the present and history and still have their hands in other places. And if you point this out, you're anti Semitic. You point that out, you're anti Semitic. Even if you had the truth, you anti all the people they, they will say that. That's how it is. And you know, even you prove the truth in the Bible, that the Quran, the scriptures and everything. Color matters in this on this earth to some people. Color of, of a complexion what God made to him whole being, every being on the planet put bone, flesh, organs, and everything. And, 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 and when it comes to our appearance, the perceptions start being made. Color 
matters. Depends on who wants to, who's going to listen to somebody who's telling a story. If you don't look like me, I don't want to hear, hear you telling a story. That's why some people are that way, because they want someone to look like them to tell them the story. They want the images when they tell it that the bubbles that look like them. They don't want the actual people that look like out of the scriptures. Why? Because color matter. It's masqueraded. Look at you for yourself. Read the scriptures. Read by the Father's Spirit and you will see. That's why those folks was telling you. They read by the Father's Spirit not to the understanding. And that's why they had to, they have to confess that. That's why they confessed it. They told the truth. And some, and most, do you know most of them were white? So really, God desired anybody in other nations desire truth. Like she said, the other nations, they want truth. But now people's eyes have been opened. And the ones who control the Christian to the Zionism don't want that to be released. They control the entities of the airwaves and the internet waves. They don't want that going out. So people have even have a silence because they don't want that. They want to continue to lie. And that's why the judgments are here. Now people are waking up. It's too late now. You can't stop it. Once something, when truth is released, you can't stop it. <laughs> you can't stop the true truth. You can't paint the way you wanted to paint it. Because subconsciously, you, you, you tell, they, they saying, we're the superior races of all the races. Subconsciously, some of these people believe that. That they have the goal and that, and if you read about the Talmud, you see how the way they thought about Christ, the one who came to was put on the cross. Go read the Talmud. Them ones were spitting, spitting. They were that them the ones that's learning that stuff. The ones spitting at the Christians. Having a little opinion about the Muslims, them the ones. They teach their youngness in a, in, in this synagogue. Boom! It's not the Messianic Jews is doing this. It's the other ones that elected uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu. Yep. In our in our country, investors support it because subconsciously America has the same spirit in Western other Western nation. What what's that spirit, James? Subconsciously, they see race, they see culture, class, and same way they see those people. Same story. Let's paint the picture of who it really is. So we can give you the image, the present day image. This goes back thousands of years. They paint you an image, what they want you to see. I like what one comedian said, they tell, you know when they say television, they tell you their vision through television. I don't know who, what comedian said that. They tell you their vision. So the whole world focus on, and it's in our families because our families don't take take time to research. They don't know the truth. This is it's not about hatred, because all people desire desire truth from all walks of life. No matter the Jew, Jewish, Arab, Black, White, they desire the truth. But there's a segment of people that don't want that truth, in, and those was the nations that are described in the Bible. That try to hide the truth that Israel will be no more. 
And just so when it comes to the 1948, they, they knew the prophecy of it. They knew. So they had a fitting. They had to wipe it out. They put this up in regions and go into other regions, even in Africa, trying to find it. Some of them went down in Africa so they can be put them down there. And if they, if they have a chance, they'll wipe them Southern Africans out, the ones that had to try because they want to wipe it out. That's how deep this stuff is. That's how skin color is. They so bold. I heard them. They so bold that they they say that the Almighty One who made all the universe has to consult with them. That's how arrogant some of them have got. This is what happened when you say that they are chosen people. And they, and they heard you said that to them. And you know, it's like a very attractive person. You keep telling somebody, they find they good looking, and after a while their head blows up. Then they turn themselves into an idol. They're not humble with what they have. Yeah, to the point that they even think that the, that they, they, they religious leaders say that God has to come to us. We, ain't that something? That's bold, ain't it? And I tell you, I can tell you a story one time. I, and I, and this particular man, and he was a Jewish man. And we was talking about life and death, and life and death one time. He had the nerve, had the nerve to say this, and when he get to heaven, he's going to demand, demand God to send him to another part of the world. Mm-hmm. I looked at it. I said, "Lord, <laughs> I ain't agree with this stuff." I said, "I know who you are," but they don't even have fear. That's how Eric, a person's arrogance can be. They don't even have fear, and they were around when a time, and they were around when a time of Christ. They was the ones that was opposed to the Christ. They was the one that was the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the scribes. They was the same ones that looked Jesus. Yeshua in his face and said what they said. They blasphemed God. They blasphemed the one who, who was sent. Let the Spirit of God show you what he's talking about. What I'm talking about. They were part of the religious system. In, your, in, in the Bible, there was the Pharisees and Sadducees. Who are you? What? 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 Why are you working in this this mysterical power? Then, then they call, call, called it out, called him out. Then everywhere he he, he go, they, they want to know. Ain't that like they doing today to over us right now? What? Where? Where are all these? Where are these Negroes? What are these Negroes doing? Watch, they're gonna do the same thing. They did that to Christ. They're going to do us the same. They always got to know what we're doing. What's with these people? You know? Keep them under control. Let's tell them what we, what we want them to think. They're doing this. The same people is linked, linked to the Pharisees and Sadducees is, is, is over there in those three major places. It's control. They descend us is controlling it. They control what we read, they control what they say, and they control, control it. And when you step out to the point that they want to keep the delusion going, even to control the image of the ones that's in the Torah and in the Bible, even in the Quran. Because why color matters? Is telling the story to keep the delusion that the darker races are the inferior ones. They telling, they telling you this. That's not they want to tell you. They say you can you can join us, but you're less inferior to us. Just well, just wait till God. He let me go first. 
Let, let's just wait. He'll get around to you eventually. Anyway, people take, like I say, they don't just say what they words. They tell you what their actions. That's what we clearly see in this video. All right, then, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed it. Till next time, like and subscribe. Let more truth come forward.